Good morning, folks. We've got a number of science articles to cover, including a bit of annoying hubris, a new door in climate science, and of course, the sun. We'll start there over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were very calm, with both the active regions and the coronal hole on the north departing the Earth-facing longitudes. The solar wind from the north is incoming tonight or tomorrow, and could reinvigorate the geomagnetic disruptions, which calmed down considerably despite the sustained high speed of the stream. But behind the coronal hole, and behind the active region, is the third key space weather maker, a large plasma filament. The thin, darker, wiggling rope behind the bright active region is a prominence of plasma, and these things like to erupt, often with no preceding flare warning, monitoring up north today for destabilization. Up first in the articles, the hubris of scientists sometimes. If it seems illogical on its face from the title, you're not wrong. But also, they used considerable assumptions about galactic halos and light effects that are nowhere near certain, and they also think they don't need to look anywhere but quasar light scattering, which is also ridiculous. But not as ridiculous as the overall search for dark matter and dark energy. Here today we see the mainstream cosmologists rewriting their version a little bit, the total amount of dark energy in the universe allegedly dropping by a percentage point or two versus the matter, which they are still saying is mostly dark, and over on the right, the non-inclusion of plasma and light and their electromagnetic forces and bound energies is an egregious wrong that has wasted billions and decades of our time. And that goes for the Axion dark matter crowd as well. Here they show how they expected to find it when they looked at a magnetar. This is the second such paper we've seen since the spring. And again, they found nothing. But hey, magnetars are key items in the cosmos and it's good to study them. Especially since when their fields get too overcharged, they arc down and crack the surface of the star. Magnetars have the same magnetic field structure as the Earth does, so one hopes there isn't a super energetic influx on the horizon or some sort of problem with Earth's magnetic field. Wink. Well, it's clear we need to do a better job finding gold in the forest. Forestry journals, that is. Recently interacted with members of this team who have shown twice recently how easily solar cycles and forcing of terrestrial conditions can be seen in the forest. Kudos to my new friend. Send us more when you get them. On to pollution, which is terrible, needs to be cut back and remediated retroactively, which I say while also saying that they have no clue about their own climate science. Just a nice nudge here in the same direction as a few days ago. If they told you initially how much pollution cooled this planet, you'd stop listening to them entirely. I recommend their papers that take the broadest look and use the most recent and updated evidence across numerous fields of study. I have the top 500 of them in Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. Check out the preview at spaceweathernews.com slash publications. Now last but not least folks, this is the same sequence in yellow that we looked at to open the show today. On the left I jacked up the return to appear hotter, obviously on the right I turned it way down. I have long stated that any coronal changes indicative of accumulation or imminent outer layer release will present via density and temperature fluctuations. That's indeed exactly what will happen. The density of the plasma is directly related to the temperature and emission and that makes the Solar Dynamics Observatory the only way to get hours to days warning of any major event brewing on the sun. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. <laughs>